Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulonto and I'm a photographer and today I'm gonna take a photo walk with this slightly unbalanced but so lovely Micro Four Thirds combo. And today this combo also feels almost like new to me and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. But it's a good reason to feel a little bit excited because it's always nice to or exciting to be shooting on a camera that feels like new and one more thing this is the first time i'm photo walking here in helsinki in my hometown for a many many months so there's another reason to be excited and oh yes this camera lens combo is the lumix gx880 and the panasonic leica 25 millimeter f1.4 mark ii The cool thing is that if you haven't been using a camera or a lens or both for a long time, they feel almost like new once you start using them after a long, long break. In my case, it's been about eight months since I used either of these. And it's not because I don't like these, it's because I spent the winter in Southeast Asia, in Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok, and I could not take all my gear with me because that would just be too much. There's only so much that you can carry when you travel light, as I like to do. I think the Lumix GX880 is one of the nicest small Micro Four Thirds cameras. It's very simple to use, but it offers a lot if you just learn how to use it. And also this Panasonic Leica 25mm f1.4 is one of the nicest or one of the best Micro Four Thirds lenses in my opinion. It uh, offers uh, a nice uh, vintage style rendering, but it's also very sharp when needed. And this Mark II version is also weather sealed. This comes with a lens hood, but the lens hood is gigantic and ugly and too big. So that is at home at the moment. I don't want to carry that gigantic hood with me. Like I already mentioned, the reason why I haven't been using this camera and lens for a long time is because I spent the winter in Southeast Asia, in Kuala Lumpur and Bangkok. And I simply could not take all my cameras and lenses with me on that trip because it would just be too much. You can only carry so much when you travel by air and travel light as I like to do. However, now I'm back in Helsinki for the summer and it does not look like tropics and it certainly does not feel like tropics. As you can see, I have much more clothes on than in any of my recent videos. And it's really interesting to see how the light changes when you travel to another side of the world. We're so far north here in Helsinki that we get these long sweeping shadows all day long. Even in the summer, the sun doesn't go very high up. But it's not all bad. Those long shadows and the low light is really nice for photography. And we also get super, super long days in the summer, 19, 20 hours of daylight. And the blue hour lasts for hours instead of 20 minutes, like in the tropics. So it's a good time to be a photographer in the summer here in the north part of the world. So this is my first photo walk here in Helsinki for a long, long time. And it's quite interesting how different this is compared to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 
the street life is uh, not as vibrant, there are less people, and everything is so organized and tidy. And sometimes that can be a bit of a challenge for a photographer. It's more difficult to uh, find uh, those epic or interesting moments on the street. But in my photography, I'm not after the most epic scenes or situations. I'm walking around and I'm observing and I'm trying to capture things that others can't see. I'm documenting what I see. And I think that's what photography is all about. It's not about finding the most epic scene or epic moment or epic sunset or whatever. I think it's more like uh, walking around, observing and trying to document what you see and try to see something that others can't see. I don't usually put this combo together, this lens on this camera body, because the lens is a little bit too big and heavy for this little tiny camera. However, I've been itching to shoot on the GX880 for a long time already, and I've also been itching to shoot on this lens for a long, long time already. So it was only logical to put this together today and take a walk. And the handling is not that bad after all. It's just a little bit front heavy. I also have the GX9 camera body, which would be more suitable for this lens. But for some reason, I haven't missed that camera much. And uh, I really didn't feel like uh, taking a walk with that camera. Don't know exactly why. Come to think of it, I know why I did not want to take the GX9. I really appreciate the tiny size of this camera body, and even with this lens, this combo is quite small. And I think that's what the Micro Four Thirds is all about. It's about the small size and compactness. Yes, uh, the tiniest camera is not suitable for every situation, but we also need high quality compact lightweight cameras like this, especially for recreational photography. It's not nice to carry a big and heavy camera on a photo walk like this. It's much nicer to take a small and compact setup like this. Commercial photography is different. Commercial photographers have different priorities and they also have different or more obligations. We recreational photographers can just enjoy photography and uh, we can also fail, which is kind of a nice feeling, no pressure. I would normally use the fully automatic P mode with a camera like this, a camera that only has one dial. It, it would be so much easier to let the camera uh, select all the exposure values. However, this camera has one minor downside regarding the shutter. This camera has a mechanical shutter that only goes to 1 over 500. And if you want faster shutter speeds than that, you have to activate the optional electronic shutter. But even if the electronic shutter is activated, this camera is very reluctant to go beyond 1 over 500 on P mode. And in a bright light like this, you end up with the quite high, unnecessarily high F numbers if you use the P mode. And because of that, I'm using aperture priority so I can stay within the optimal aperture range, which for Micro Four Thirds is F5.6 or lower F number. It's not necessary to go beyond f5.6 unless you need, for whatever reason, if you need a lot of depth of field, all the depth of field that you can squeeze out of your camera. But in most cases, f5.6 is plenty enough.
the electronic shutter can introduce some rolling shutter jello effect in pictures if there are moving elements but for the type of photography i'm doing today it doesn't really matter there are not uh, too many fast moving subjects or objects in my pictures today so i'm fine with the electronic shutter This is a fun little camera and a fun little lens too. Together, these are a slightly unbalanced combo, but I like the results. Today, I'm not sure if I captured any super special photos, but I'm also getting used to the northern light and the, how would I say, subdued street life compared to Southeast Asia. I hope you enjoyed this photo walk with me and if you did enjoy it a lot please do consider buying me a cup of coffee there's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland thank you so much for joining in and I'll definitely see you in the next video